Welcome back to the Hour and Invite podcast. My name is Nima. I'm Aaron. And today we're joined by Dr. Kathy Leonard, the Pharmacy Operations Manager at Publix. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we see here that you actually greeted us very well. So we want to thank you first for giving us these gifts. Everybody so, can use a little swag in their life. Right? <laughs> I mean, really appreciate it. So um, presentation it seems like it's very key at Publix. Is that something that you guys are about? Is that is that something that you guys instill? Absolutely. I think it's part of just human nature. You know, you look for the best qualities in, in people and how they present. You both, you, all of you have presented yourselves very well this morning, but you look for that. It makes that first impression on people. And it's no different in our stores from how our pharmacists interact with patients, how they interact with prescribers, uh, and how they interact with each other. Uh, all, all goes a long way with our customers and the brand and what we're trying to build at Publix. Well, we appreciate it. So thank you so yeah, much. You're welcome. And I'm glad you you're got my welcome. size. I, re I really <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> no, the details matter. <laughs> I'm a pharmacist. The details matter. <laughs> so a little bit about you. Can you just tell the people a little bit about your role and sure. um, a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I have the fortunate position to oversee the operations for Publix Pharmacy in the Southeast. Uh, with that, I am responsible for 233 pharmacy locations. One of those is our outpatient pharmacy at Nicholas Children's Hospital. So oh, we're nice. really excited about the yeah. opportunities that we have there. Um, and I've been with Publix in March. I'll be celebrating 29 years. Wow, uh, congratulations. Uh, which is uh, something I'm really proud of. But I can tell you at Publix, that kind of makes me the rookie. Uh, really? There's a lot of tenure in this okay. organization, and I think that that goes, goes hand in hand with uh, when you take good care of your associates. Yeah. Uh, that word spreads pretty quickly, um, just like the inverse does as well. If that doesn't sure. happen, yeah. those things spread very quickly. Uh, but a lot of people recognize Publix as a great place to work, and I'm one of those. What, uh, you, you've been here for a very long time, and you said that you're, you're, not, you're not even the, <laughs> like, you've been here the longest. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people are sticking around for so long? I think the key to it uh, was made clear and kind of coined by one of our former CEOs, Ed Crenshaw, when he said that we have the secret sauce at Publix, and that's really employee ownership. Uh, everybody at Publix owns a part of, of it, so whether mm -hmm. we succeed or fail, everybody has skin in the game, and I think that goes a long way. When you when somebody owns something and you can apply that to anything, they, they genuinely take better care of it yeah. true. and feel more connected. Yeah. And as we move through this year, there's going to be even more of a heightened focus on connections. So connections with, I think it's just natural. People want to feel connected. Yeah. You know, they want to be a part of it and know that what they're doing makes a difference. And that's um, connections with our customers and how we build those relationships um, connections with prescribers, connections with health systems, connections with each other within our organization so that we can retain people and help them to build and establish a great career that they're really proud of at Publix. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. So what are some of the future goals you're looking at in terms of expanding the pharmacy at Publix? Future goals. So I think to keep it simple, our goal is to be able to provide the services that every patient needs at Publix, okay. uh, to not limit it and say, you can't come to Publix because we may not offer that service. Uh, nothing, I think, bothers us more than there being a need that's not met or yeah. we can't meet at Publix. Mm. So with new technology and just the evolving expectations of the customer, uh, we're looking to see how can we meet those demands and kind of get ahead of it. But bring the customer along as well. You know, we have a, a large populations of patients that we serve that are Medicare patients. Mm -hmm. And we I don't think it's appropriate to look at all of our patients the same. There's different needs that each patient has, yeah. different um, willingness to adapt to technology, and different expectations for how that relationship and that partnership with the pharmacy goes. Some patients want to have a really strong person-to-person um, -person mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. And yeah. then others are like, how can I yeah. get this faster? <laughs> and we just want to make sure that it's safe in whatever we do. You're in charge of so many Publixes yeah. across. How do you keep up? How do you make sure everything's going well in each one? If there's complaints, how do you go deal without, with the complaints? Yeah. I mean, there's well, so many of them. Well, there's not a ton of complaints, let me clarify. <laughs> but there are some. And, you know, what's, what's exciting and what I love about this job after all the time that I've had with Publix Every morning that I get up, I genuinely am excited to come to work for the opportunity wow. that lays ahead. And that is, is the good and the bad because yeah. I think there's so much we can learn from the customer who, where we didn't get it right. Mm -hmm. 
and it's not about blame. It's not. It's really about yeah. a sense of understanding. Where did we go wrong, okay. and how can we prevent that moving forward? At the end of the day, if the customer leaves our store and they're not satisfied, it doesn't matter how defensive I am that, you know, well, we did it right. We followed a process or we followed a policy. Yeah. That customer left, and they, they left with a feeling of, eh. You know, yeah. we didn't wow them. We didn't deliver on what we said we were going to deliver. So the fun part for me is getting to make that right and figuring it out for each customer. And I'm going to be even more committed to that this year to make sure that we don't just get the patient back to a neutral stance of, okay, you know, you called me, you gave me my money back, you made yeah. it mm -hmm. sort of right. We're yeah. going to make it really right. I want that customer to leave singing the praises of Publix and feeling once again connected to who we are, to our brand, and to our people, so that they have confidence that we're going to take care of them, um, whether that's their health care, their grocery needs, whatever it is that Publix can provide, we want to take care of that for that customer. So in part, that's the fun part. It's interesting. Yeah. I think when you approach it from the perspective of if that yeah. was my family member, yeah. what would I do? And instead of immediately being defensive, mm -hmm. but getting on the customer's side so that they know, you know, yeah. I'm your biggest advocate. Yeah. I'm going to do everything I can to make this right. Give me the, please give me the opportunity to, and you know, something put them in that position. Right. I don't know what it is, exactly. but we had a role in it exactly. somehow intentionally or not. And let's fix it. Let's make it better. So that that customer goes and tells 15 more people how exactly. great Publix pharmacy is. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to be able to serve every patient in our market and with technology and beyond yeah. our markets, right? <laughs> yeah. um, because I think we offer a great service and a great product, and I have complete confidence in our people uh, because of the investment that Publix makes in our people. Uh, we don't chop people off at the knees. We, we go to find out what's the understanding. Mm -hmm. We invest in training, yeah. and we try our best to set the example. So you said you know, you're the biggest advocate for the customer. So you actually, you, you started out working as a cashier at, at Publix. So can you just take us through that journey and how you've ended up where you're at today? Sure, sure. Like so many people, I, I walked through the doors of Publix when I was in high school. <coughs> uh, Publix came to town. I, I grew up in a small town, Land Lakes, Florida. Okay. And when they built a new store, it was exciting and new. And me and several friends from high school said, hey, let's go get a job at okay. Publix. So it was more of a social thing, to be completely <laughs> honest. And so we went, and I went and I applied for a job. Okay. Uh, I have I left with so much more than that, in the sense that I have established a career that I'm very proud of. Uh, but I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of associates mm -hmm. that you speak to, uh, they that work for Publix have a very similar journey, and. It's kind of it's kind of a cool thing to watch that evolve. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I got a job as a part time cashier, and there was a situation where I was disgruntled as a teenager about mm -hmm. pay because somebody got more money than I did. Okay. And my dad, a great mentor in my life, said, "You know, you can pitch a fit all you want about that, but is your pay going to change?" Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. He said, "If you <laughs> want to be effective, you have to go to your manager and ask what more can you do for public supermarkets." So the next time pay gets evaluated, you will be considered for a greater increase. Okay. And I said, well, isn't that very adult? <laughs> <you say?" laughs> so I did that. I had to practice because that wasn't natural for me okay. to go and ask that or, or say that or put myself out there. And I did. And then opportunities started to open up okay. once my manager or leader knew, what did I want? Okay, well, I'm telling you as a teenager, I have a car payment and I have these things. <laughs> yeah. Money's important to me. Um, so I did that, and as those opportunities opened up, it was that was the cascade that took me to the pharmacy. At some point, my, my store manager saying, you know, the pharmacist needs help in the pharmacy. Okay. And all this time later, you know the words that I remember the most from that conversation? <laughs> what? He said, I need somebody I can trust mm. to go over there. And all this time later, it resonates with me as a leader that the words we choose to say to people are they lasting. Can, that's true. They that's, stick that's around. True. You trusted me. I immediately. I knew nothing about the pharmacy, mm -hmm. but I immediately had this sense of he's putting me over there for a reason, and he trusts me. I can't mess this up. Yeah. True. I have to do a really good job. <laughs> and then I just had great mentors and leaders okay. around me, from pharmacists to store managers, district managers, a multitude of leaders to basically raise me, <laughs> yeah. keep me on the right path, 
but to encourage me and let me know that it could be done. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. Why don't you go to pharmacy school? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> why don't you become a pharmacy manager? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I think that's natural too to kind of, can I do it? Can I do it? Yeah. But I hope that my story and that transition and path is inspiring to others of what they can accomplish yeah, and sure. what they can achieve. So, we, so Publix is the reason why you got into pharmacy? Absolutely. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. I had no interest, no desire, no knowledge yeah. of even doing that, but really didn't have a lot of direction as far as what I wanted to do. Okay. You know, you finish high school and some people have a very clear cut path mm -hmm. of I'm yes. going to be a surgeon, I'm going to be a baseball player, yeah. I'm going to be whatever. Yeah. I was kind of like, ah, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what that answer is. Okay. Uh, so, but I knew I wanted to work hard. I knew yeah. that uh, I wanted to be successful in whatever it was, and I knew that I wanted to love what I do. Okay. And I think I'm there. So <laughs> I've worked at retail pharmacy before, and I won't I won't mention the other names, That's but okay. I've noticed that pharmacists at Publix really come um do things that other pharmacists at other companies don't mm -hmm. like they're they go to the cashier they they don't mind helping and doing technician yeah. work i guess right um why do you think that is is that something you guys look for when you are hiring is that a certain personality you look for that you're like all right this person can be a good fit is that yeah. Absolutely, because it's not just the fit for Publix, it's the fit for the associate too. So in the hiring process, and the as we go through interviews and all of that, it's really about finding someone whose goals and values align with that of Publix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at Publix, it's very much a team mentality. Of yeah. One person can't do it on their own. Yeah. And if you try to, that burden gets very heavy yeah. on your shoulders. And then what happens when X, Y, and Z don't fall into place just, just so? Right. Somebody calls out mm -hmm. or there's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah or you need to depend on somebody else or lean on somebody for added support, yeah. if we're siloed as individuals, that makes that much more challenging. Yes. So we ask a lot of questions about experience, and, and it becomes pretty evident if, during an interview even about somebody's previous experience if they're just giving you a, a blanket answer of, mm -hmm. yeah, I really like to do <laughs> yeah, those yeah, things. Honestly. Or if they get excited and are like, you know, look, th this is a time that I was able to jump in and do this and this, and it's, it's about teamwork and working together. Uh, we absolutely look for that. Yeah, it definitely stands out, so. Yeah, and you can tell, you know, we won't name any, any competitors. And honestly, I can see it in our stores from time to time. You know, we're not, we're not perfect. Uh, we certainly strive for excellence in all that we do. But you can tell the difference in any retail pharmacist yep. or really in any profession if somebody's passionate about what they That's do true. and they <laughs> like what they're doing. You yeah. can see it on their faces. You can see it in their body yeah. language. And the more our teams operate as a family unit and with, you know, a sense of personal connection to each other of, you know what, the three of us, we're a team. Yeah. yeah I'm not, I'm going to work harder because I'm not going to disappoint the two of you yeah. and vice versa. The customer picks up on that and sees that. That's true. And then there's like a positive energy and vibe that people yeah. just want to be around. Okay. Nobody really wants to be at a retail pharmacy. You know, you'd rather be at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. Some, somewhere fun. Yeah. You know, That's where the excited. chicken pub sandwiches come in. Right. Those pub subs are pretty <laughs> phenomenal. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. They are spectacular. But people are excited when they're in the pub sub line. They're not as excited when they're waiting at the good pharmacy. Point. Right? They're, they're sick. They don't yeah. feel well. Oftentimes just received a bad diagnosis yeah. or yeah. something. But there's, there's wins too. Somebody just found out they're going to have a new baby and there's yeah, no. there's things to celebrate but the the biggest thing to celebrate is those relationships with our patients where you know whatever that news good bad or whatever the customer feels like you know what I have a connection with somebody I have a connection with a pharmacist and a team this is my far, my pharmacy family yeah, yeah, exactly. that I can go to and I know they're gonna and I have confidence in the information they're gonna share with me they're knowledgeable they're um, empathetic you know they're there yeah. to try to advocate and be a resource for me and that's what we try to accomplish but it's not for yeah. everybody yeah. retail uh, sure, pharmacy yeah. is not for everybody sure. and i can tell pretty quickly if it's not for somebody how, how would you um <laughs> it's really in body language and in their willingness to help somebody do they okay. genuinely is that their nature to want to help somebody or is it, is it a kathy standing here yeah so i have to be forced or does kathy have to say hey customer is okay. look can't you tell that by body language that that customer is looking for something i'm gonna i'm gonna go help them I got you. you stay here and take care of filling those prescriptions i'm gonna go out and, and try to lead by example to show them be aware of your surroundings yeah. because every patient's not going to ask. Yeah, they don't. Sure. They'll feel like they're bothering you. <clears throat> yeah, honestly. You know, they'll, so they'll see that the pharmacist yeah, yeah, yeah. is busy. Some pharmacists are really good at 
showing how busy they are because they almost want that barrier. Mm. If I don't, mm. if they see how crazy I am, yeah. don't make eye contact because then you're committed. You know, once you yeah. make, connect with the patient. <laughs> <You're done. laughs> but I, I seek that out and I try to get others to seek that out and, and recognize those signs. We have language barriers, all kinds yeah. of things that, that we can help assist with to make people make sure they're making the right choices for their health care and that they have a good understanding of how to how to dose that medication for mm. a child yeah. or for an elderly parent. So the more informed and just those relationships, it affects compliance wholeheartedly. <laughs> That's true. So, you know, you, you guys are really big on uh, serving the community. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you do that is through the free medication program, the $7.50 medication program. Yeah. So how did that idea come into fruition? And I guess, how do you pick these medications? Okay. So, well, for crying out loud, it's expensive, yeah, right? We agree. <laughs> Medication costs continue to rise, and we just saw a need in the community that started with, you know, recognizing that when a child is sick or somebody is mm. sick, that puts an unexpected or unplanned bur financial burden yeah. Yeah. on families. And oh. you look at that process of someone going, taking a child, taking time off work yeah. to take their child to the pediatrician to get a prescription to then go to the pharmacy to potentially find out that antibiotic may be $100. Yeah. And they say, there's no way I can afford that. So they abandon the prescription, the child remains sick, yeah. and it creates, then maybe they go to urgent care, and it's this, yeah. this excessive spend in health care that's unnecessary. So we looked for ways that we could, um, we don't have a solution for everything, obviously, but uh, we have a series of antibiotics that are out there, and that's certainly what it started with. Uh, and it also gives us an opportunity to potentially earn new customers that may not think yeah, of Publix sure. Pharmacy as their healthcare destination. We want to change that. So if a prescriber says, hey, I'm going to write this amoxicillin prescription, it's free at Publix. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. get somebody's attention. It does, yeah. for sure. Right? I've told a lot of people, trust me. Yeah, there's value. <laughs> there's value In class, we always bring it up. Every time yeah. something goes like, oh, you want it's metformin? Free <laughs> it's free at Publix. So, you know, but that's our opportunity yeah. once you come in for that free medication to Keep establish on. that relationship exactly. to where you feel comfortable and say, maybe I was going somewhere else, but man, that was just out of habit. I didn't realize how great it could be. I really feel a part of something. I'm going to get all of my family's health care needs met at Publix yeah. Pharmacy. That's, that's part of the goal for sure. Uh, and then that we extrapolated that out a little bit more to some um, more maintenance um, types of disease states mm -hmm. like diabetes and hypertension and things that affect a huge percentage yeah. of the population. Yeah. Uh, same thing. We don't want people abandoning a, an option of medication or care because yes. of cost. And so those are good starting places, you know, metformin. Yep. Pretty commonly dispensed, mm -hmm. but like cinnaprolium, lodipine. And then beyond that, to be able to extrapolate out to even more disease states mm -hmm. and cover more medication is our 750 program. Yeah. So on that, there's, I don't know the exact number, over 25 at least different medications for a variety of disease states commonly prescribed yes. stuff it's not you know willy-nilly hey look at us but yeah. nobody's ever going to write for this kind right. of stuff it's commonly prescribed medication so to be able to get a three-month supply of that for your loved ones for yeah. seven dollars and fifty cents that's crazy yeah. that's affordable <laughs> yeah. and that's something that we're proud of too just continuously looking for ways to make health care more affordable so technology like you said earlier is a big part of our, our society our generation right now um, a lot of people say that technology might take over the pharmacy world, especially in retail. What do you say to those people? Do you think it's a myth? Do you think that for retail pharmacy is something that will be lasting for a while? Well, I think that there's a lot of ways to look at that in a positive light and to embrace technology. Um, we have to do it cautiously because we're dealing with PHI and uh, things that are we don't want, you know, we don't really have a lot of room for mistakes. Yeah. Uh, but we need to embrace that as a way to add efficiencies to um, growing volumes in our stores. Um, we want to be able to serve the patients timely. And when people are sick, you know, even having it now isn't, isn't quick enough in a yeah. lot of cases. And we're all patients too, so we all understand that. Or having sick children with you, you yeah. know, there's, you just, you want it now and you want it to be as convenient as possible and as seamless as possible. And I would venture to say that the majority of people don't, wouldn't consider pharmacy, retail pharmacy seamless. 
there's oftentimes, you know, and you know probably from your experiences that you've got insurance problems, you've got yeah. prior authorization problems, you've got, you don't have it in stock. Well, you have yeah. it, but you don't have the right strength. Yeah. Or the yeah. doctor, you know, there was something missing on the prescription, so we got to call the prescriber back and clarify. So we want to embrace technology in every way possible to add efficiency so that we can free up the human element yeah. of what we do, free up our people so that you're not so busy talking on the phone to get a prescription number then you can say, hey, Miss Jones, I'm going to set you up on our med synchronization program. Mm -hmm. We'll get you set up on a 90-day supply of your medications. We know that that will make her more compliant. If she has the medication at home, mm -hmm. she's more apt to take it yeah, of course. <laughs> than if she's got those gaps every 30 days because yeah. she, didn't, she didn't get to the store or whatever. So we know that that will help. And then invite her to come in and talk to us in the store. And then as she's talking to you in the store, it's amazing what you can pick up from conversations with your patients by yeah. letting them do the talking. True. Yeah. Because then you're like, say yeah, that again. Yeah. Yeah. How are you taking that medication? Yeah. Or how are you injecting yep. that medication? And I think there's real value in, in those personal connections. So we're focused on embracing technology every bit that we can. And I'm excited for the future and what technology will bring. Well, I, we see you're expanding in your realm. Can you speak on the specialty and compounding pharmacy realm that uh, Publix is stepping into? Yeah. So, again, one more avenue, actually two, that there's a potential there that our patients need something, and we want to be able to meet that need. So with specialty, uh, URAC accredited, um, um, ACHC accredited, mm -hmm. we are, you know, Publix does things right and looks to make sure that we uphold the highest standards in everything that we do. And our current process is just what can we continue to do to get into more limited distribution networks okay. so we have access to these medications. Um, you know, people look at Publix as a grocery store because yeah. that's, that's what we are. Yeah. But we're a grocery store that provides health care. And there's mm -hmm. a, the reality is there's a lot of people walking through our doors every day that need, that come to us for solutions. Yes. And when we're not in those networks, we do everything we can to advocate and point that person in the right direction, even if it means at the end of the day, we're not able to fulfill it yeah. because we don't want to leave that customer in limbo. Exactly. You know, you walk into some stores, and I did this a while back, and I, I just went into random stores, mm -hmm. not just Publix. I went into some Publix locations, but I went into our competitors too and asked questions about Harvoni at the time. Okay. So, you know, got a prescription, my parent was just diagnosed, needs um, this prescription, what can you tell me about it? And the information that you got back on that was so interesting. There were really? some people that would say, I don't, never heard of it. Right. There would be some people that would say, holy cow, that's $90,000 for a three month supply, yeah. you know? And yeah. what, what message does that send to the customer? Yeah. You know, you're already like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but there's no empathy, there's mm -hmm. no caution yeah. before no hope, you yeah. dump that on a patient. Uh, and then there were some that were very knowledgeable and very helpful. And what we want to do is anytime we see those prescriptions come in, we want to tell the customer, it's your lucky day. You chose the right pharmacy to come to because we are going to do everything in our power, not only to fill the prescription and help you with this. So you don't have to get in your car and drive to yeah. six different pharmacies. Yeah. You know, you don't have time for that in your mm -hmm. day. We're going to take care of it. We're going to do everything we can to reduce the cost as much as we can, yeah. whether that's by through foundation support mm. with some of our affiliations through Moffitt Cancer Center and different uh, resources that we have. Uh, and we talk about giving value to our customers. And when you can take a prescription that's as expensive as Harvoni yeah. and yeah. apply and let somebody know at the counter that, hey, this is a maybe a $50 copay or maybe there's no charge at all. Yeah, they'll be happy about that. <laughs> people cry yeah. legit, like yeah. tear up and, are, and you know you've made an impact. Yeah. And that feels good to our people. We have technicians that dig into this and are yeah, like, yeah. we are going to, this is like, that was my parent. What would I do? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love to see that because that's, that's really what Publix is all about. So in the end of the day, everyone has competition, yes. right? How do you look at your competition? If they make a move, uh -huh. um, how do you attack that? Like, do you like, do you try to go and copy them because you yeah. think they're moving forward? Um, you guys are at the top, so it there depends. Is. But there's a lot to learn from our competitors. True. So one, I'm glad they're there because imagine a world with no competition yeah. Yeah. that we would have no need exactly. to progress and mm -hmm. move forward. So having our competitors there, I think our eyes are always focused on what is what is everyone doing yeah. and. 
it may or may not apply to Publix. Um, at the core of what we want to do stems from George Jenkins founded this company in 1930 during the Depression. So people tell me things are hard. I'm like, you don't know hard. I don't know Honestly. hard. That was hard. Yeah. So to have the resources and what we have today to be able to build on Publix and learn from the success of our competitors, somebody says, hey, I really like going to another location, another retail pharmacy, and this is why. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. I don't say, I don't try to dispute it yeah. Yeah. and say, no, that can't possibly be. They don't have good people. <laughs> yeah. There's great pharmacists everywhere. Um, I want them all at Publix. I want to make sure that as I'm out in the community looking and visiting other locations, I, I'm looking for key traits and characteristics that when people don't think nobody, anybody's paying attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that comp the competitive nature, I just I think it's good for progress. And there'll be some things that we'll look at and say, hey, we need to advance that. And we know some of those things, you know, prepaying for your, your medication before mm -hmm. you come in. You know, we're piloting various avenues for that now to roll that out to our stores. Delivery, um, access to medications, and just adding those convenience factors that so many people are looking for. Uh, doesn't mean we'll do it the same way as a competitor. In some cases, maybe we will. Maybe we'll say, you know what, we've evaluated it, and that's the right way to, that's the right move yeah. for Publix. But in all things, looking to operate a better business than our competitor at every turn. And I think that stems from having the right people that want to deliver on that every day. Yeah. They're going to do more because they want to than because they have to. So what can we do to make people feel connected so that they want to do that? Yeah, and myself and Nima, we always talk about you can't do things alone. You need a team. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, you just can't sure. do it. Absolutely. So, yeah, we're glad that, you know, that's one of the main things that Publix is about. So... In the next, I say, 10 to 15 years, what are, what are one of your main goals that you want to have accomplished for Publix Pharmacy? Mm -hmm. I know it's like a, a loaded question. That is a loaded question. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that I've got the crystal ball and no, I want us to be, I want us to continue to be relevant uh -huh. uh, and the, the key choice for people. I love when I can have a discussion with a customer that's in a store that doesn't traditionally use Publix mm -hmm. Pharmacy, yeah. but they're in our store five or six times a week for everything else. I love when I can engage with them one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation and just watch like kind of the wow factor okay. when I ask them, hey, where are you getting your metformin filled? And they, they may say some more, how much are you paying for that mm -hmm. each month? Yeah. And I can say, well, you know what? I could give that to you at no charge. And to watch them just kind of their, their body language mm -hmm. shift and change to this realization of... I didn't even know Publix maybe had a pharmacy. Honestly. Let, let alone, you can do that. What else can you do? Okay. Well, we can vaccinate. We can provide um, all ACIP-approved immunizations at our stores. We can um, provide MTM services to make sure that patients are more compliant and adherent. Our MedSync program, cost savings programs, so many things that uh, I want to see that continue to expand. Okay. And I think technology will be a big part of it uh, to make Publix Pharmacy um, a continued player in the retail game. But um, especially as we move forward, just I think really just continuing to evolve our processes and our services that we offer to keep yeah. up with the expectation and demand of the patient. So you're in your position, you're at the top of your position, right? Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to pharmacists or even students that are trying to get to your position? Okay. Um, not to take your job. But <laughs> no, that's all right. I, I, I encourage that. I have a team of six supervisors, and I tell them routinely, you know, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. I, I won't be in this position forever, but I'm an owner of Publix. So this isn't about making decisions for today for me. This is about making decisions for Publix to be sustainable and relevant for you, generations to come. And I think the average business today lasts about 15 years. Yep. Yep. Publix is going to celebrate our 90th birthday wow. in 2020. Wow. So I want that longevity to continue. And, you know, our pharmacies, as I've seen it progress and grow, mm -hmm. I want that to continue to grow. And things that I can't even imagine right now, um, you know, regulatory changes within our state so that... Yeah. We empower our technicians more um, with proper training. I think there's a lot of ability and skill set to elevate that mm -hmm. and allow our pharmacists to, to operate at the top of their license at the same time, um, provider status, test and treat, you yeah. know, so many things that I think we've got yeah. trained, well-educated individuals that um, can enhance uh, and improve the outcome for the patient in the process. 
So uh, I'm a big believer in any uh, team that's successful. It, it starts from your leadership from the top. So what what are your main takeaways that you uh, that George Jenkins has um, instilled in your life that you think has helped you be successful in what you're doing? There's so many, um, but you're right. It's the leaders around you yeah. that, you know, I was once told that there's two types of leaders. There's a leader that will throw you through the wall or there's a leader that'll make you want to run through a wall f for them. And True. I am fortunate to work for a leader that makes me want to run through the wall <laughs> every day. Uh, so, but I've had influence from so many. I was just thinking about these things that are posted yeah. behind me, and those are really the messages of George Jenkins that he's taught us. So be there. You have to be present uh, with your teams. You can't lead a team of people behind a desk yeah. with no presence. You have to physically be there, and they have to know that. True. Um, you have to, uh, giving, you know, we're a very um, community-oriented business, but giving, the more you give away, the more that comes back to you. So having that mindset that's genuine and authentic, investing in others. So, you know, ongoing training, but taking time to really make that wow moment for somebody mm -hmm. who may think, yeah. Kathy's not going to take the time for that. Kathy may come and sit with you at a training for lunch and say, let's, I'm gonna, can I sit with you for lunch yeah. and let's talk? Or somebody that I know is struggling with something, you know, sharing my experiences. I've, I've had plenty of struggles. So yeah. from that, there's a lot of lessons. I can help others see that there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel to get past yeah. that. Uh, respecting the dignity of the individual. I think that's true in all that we do. Yeah. It's not because I said so, and it's not um, anything that we do. We always make sure that we're conscious of that okay. because I want that in turn. Yeah, you know, even if, if I make a bad decision or something goes wrong yeah. or I make a poor choice because we're human and that can happen, I want to make sure that somebody takes the time to intervene, but that at all, at all turns they respect the dignity of the individual. Uh, the customer is king and queen. That's, that's, that's so big. So top of the, you know, yeah. they're the ones making the choices. Honestly. And there's a lot of choices today on where people yeah. go for their groceries, where they exactly. go for their health care. We want to be that choice. Prepare for opportunity. There's a ton of opportunity at Publix. Um, now some people will sit back and wait for that opportunity to come to them, and they'll probably be sitting for a while. Exactly. Uh, occasionally you get lucky and somebody says, hey, I see you sitting back, <laughs> but I see that you have tremendous potential and sometimes that boost of confidence will help somebody go, hmm. I need, a, yeah. I need someone I can trust, right? Yeah. Exactly. I need somebody I can trust. So me saying that to somebody who may think, you know, I'm not really that, yeah. that go-to person. We'll have had an assistant one time in a store, and I said, you know, when, when, when are you stepping up to the plate? You know, you've got great ability. When are you going to be a pharmacy manager? What's, what's holding us back okay. here? Okay. And she said, she kind of cocked her head and said, you really think so? And she said, no, my, I'm, my pharmacy manager's Batman and I'm Robin. And she's like, I'm okay with being Robin. And I was like, really? Just give it some thought because we need great Robins too. But I think anybody can be Batman. So <laughs> it's just, it's letting people know that sometimes that you see, the, you see those characteristics in them yeah. that they don't even see in themselves. Builds their confidence and then kind of gets the wheels spinning That's a little true. bit of, maybe I could do that. Kathy yeah. thinks I can do it. Let me try. Yeah. And then doing the right thing, uh, that's at the, the center of what we do, not trying our best not to make decisions that are self-serving. This is going to benefit Kathy. Those are very short-sighted yeah. decisions, and they, they often have um, bad implications. But if in the decisions that we make, we really focus on what's best for publics and what's best for our people, and what would I do if it was the person that I thought was struggling the most or the person that is the best associate at Publix, yeah. being consistent with how I handle yeah. that, uh, I think goes a long way. So long answer to your question. <laughs> Those were just a Great few answer. of the things. Just a few of the things. So Publix recently made a collaboration with Beefert Memorial Hospital uh -huh. to improve their patient care. How important are these collaborations with the hospitals? They're crazy important. You know, we yeah. want to make sure that we have that um, collaborative spirit in everything that we do. Our goal is to um, make healthcare a little bit better. And if we can do that, we're serving the same patient. Mm -hmm. And I think it's similar to what we found with immunizations. When pharmacists were able to immunize, there was some trepidation about mm -hmm. that and what that would do yeah. for prescribers. And the reality is there's, it's only improved vaccination exactly. rates. You know, we continue to work with prescribers on various things that they need, but it's, it's building that collaboration to ultimately benefit the patient, not any one entity. Yeah. 
And I think it's the same with the healthcare systems is we have an opportunity to help, you know, just build those relationships so that, you know, they're trying to reduce um, readmissions and, you know, patients are released from the hospital. If we can be a part of that continuum of care for patients, it's huge. And our brand is recognizable. I think it's a brand that people trust, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to protect that and make sure that that's always the case, but any kind of collaboration with healthcare partners um, is something we'll continue to evaluate and uh, make sure that we continue to expand that. So a little bit of a curveball question. If we were to go back into high school or undergrad, what, who, who was Kathy Leonard in, uh, in high school and Who would your friends say? If, if they we had to your describe friends or professors, you. how would they, if we say... We're sitting with Dr. Kathy Leonard today. What would, what they, would they say, say? To us? Pig, are you are? <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you say, Dr. Kathy Leonard? Um, I would like to think that there, you know, that I haven't changed all that much. I think I've come out of my shell a little bit more okay. than I did um, in high school. Although I was a cheerleader in high school, <laughs> so I was kind of loud and obnoxious. And <laughs> some would say that hasn't changed. Uh, I am very enthusiastic and easily inspired. Uh, and I take that inspiration and try to share that with others. Uh, I would hope that people see me as um, somebody with integrity and character. And, um, but you, you never know until you ask, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah, sure. but I, would, I would like to think that there would be some that would probably be surprised um, that I'm sitting here today. And then others that would say, yeah, we, we expected that. Um, so, um, clinics, um, are a very big thing now. A lot of people are not going to hospitals. There's a lot of more clinics opening up. Right. Is Publix working on instilling clinics inside the pharmacy? Mm-hmm. So it's something we're certainly, um, expanding on and it's because of just the demands of the patient. they people need access and they need convenience. Um, but yet they still want a, a healthcare provider that they can trust and have confidence in. They don't want to, you know, dial a doc and have somebody, you know, that they don't they don't have any connection to or uh-huh. know how is that person trained or am I sure I'm getting good health care. Mm-hmm. So as part of our Bay Care collaboration, uh, we have um, walk-in care centers in some of our locations in the yes. Tampa market for that exact purpose. Um, high resolution video monitors. So oh. you go in and you have a private consultation with a Bay Care certified physician. So awesome. there's that brand recognition too and something that the patient can trust. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then anything that's diagnosed, and it's, you know, they're not diagnosing anything extensive. Mm-hmm. It's going to be for your basic rash, um, cough and cold, okay. very, you know, acute care types of things. Um, but when that happens, any prescriptions that are needed can immediately be sent to the pharmacy. And it, it streams, streamlines that whole process for the patient right there. Yeah. The doctor prescribes something that the pharmacy doesn't have. Well, the pharmacy will call that prescriber, and there's just that immediate sense of let's make this right okay. without the patient having to go from pediatrician mm-hmm. to pharmacy, potentially to another pharmacy, mm-hmm. and then home with a sick child or something. Um, or they're vacationing and something unexpected happens and their their traditional primary care doctor's not here. You know, what, what's a solution that we can provide to them? So that's something that we're continuing to look at and expand. All right. So I'm a customer. I'm walking in and yeah. I'm not sure I have three different prescriptions and I'm not sure if I should go to Publix or somewhere else. Yeah. What are you saying to that customer? I'm going to say, yeah, hey, my I, name I was just <laughs> I'm Aaron. Nice Aaron, to meet so you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Publix. I'm going to take those prescriptions. Okay. If you've got a screaming child, we're going to try to do something. About I have three. Biopsy. I'm sorry. I have three of them. Three screaming <laughs> yes. children that they're sick. Oh my goodness. Here, I'm going to give you something to occupy them. It Thank might be you. A coloring sheet. It might be something just to kind of help put your mind at ease. Okay. I'm going to ask if you have a cell number. Yes. If you do, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Can I text you in a few minutes? And, you know, maybe if you want to take the kids outside, they're hungry, you need to go get them some food, something. Okay. I'm going to try to make that right for you as quickly as I can. You're probably not my only customer right now, right? So there's probably other people going, you know, how long do I have to wait? There's people behind you. So I'm going to try to expedite that as quick as possible. I'm going to ask you if you have insurance. Okay. I'm going to, if you have insurance, it's going to be a copay or in the new year, a deductible. You may already know what that is, but say something comes back and it's not covered. Okay. And you, I tell you it's a hundred dollars. I can't afford that. Oh my goodness. You're right. That's a lot of money, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Well, let me see if there's anything I can do. Let me see what's the best price that I can provide you. And okay. I'm going to look and I'm going to use our resources to see. You may have a discount card that you bring in and mm. say, you know, this was in the mail. Is there any benefit to this? Okay. okay. Well, give it, let's give it a go. Let's see. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, let's try it. 
when I come back and tell you your prescription is ten dollars, wow, then you're like, wow, <laughs> only ten. Now, caveat: <laughs> it may not always be that. Way. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, but if there's any kind of a savings that we can pass on to you, we're going to do that. I'll let you know how long it's going to okay. take. Are you going to wait with your kids? Do you, would you prefer to wait? Would you prefer to? Um, go run some errands or get the kids home and then then come back at a later time. We're going to establish that based on what you want. Not me saying it'll be ready in an hour. Yeah. It should be, when would you like to pick that up? So once we have that agreement, I'm going to do everything in my power. Yeah. I'm not going to overpromise and tell you it can be ready in two minutes yeah. Yeah. if I know that can't happen because yeah. then I'm just going to disappoint you. But if I can say, if you tell me, hey, I'm going to come back in an hour, I'm going to get them home, get them situated, I'll come back and pick the medication yeah. up. I'm going to have it ready for you in an hour. All right. That sounds awesome. Sound good? Great. Yeah. That's um, the plan. If there's one thing, yeah. let's say we have all the pharmacists that are under you in front of, in, 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 in a room right now, yeah. and we told you to tell them something that they would be shocked to know about you, what would that oh one, what would that something be? <laughs> I thought I was going to tell them something, and I was all prepared to say thank you because they work so hard. What you I wouldn't give to too. have my whole team in a room and be able to thank them for what they do. Well, they can all see this, so you can oh, thank they can them all right see that. now. So thank you for what you do. It's 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 not easy uh, yeah. being a retail working in retail in general, whether you're yeah, selling yeah. medication or anything. It's tough. It's a tough environment, but there are people who are cut out for it, and I can see it in them. And when when it's the right person, and they're really they have the skill set and they've honed that, yeah. mm -hmm. man, what an impact they can make. And there's so many I can think of off the top of my head by name that just, wow, they awesome. inspire me every day based on what they do and the challenges that they overcome and how they get it all done. Um, really amazing. So something that they don't know about me. I love to fish. Okay. Um, I love to golf. Um, Are you good? I love to stay <laughs> active. I'm not good. Is okay. that <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Publix is going to lose me to the P LPGA tour anytime <laughs> soon, I promise. I wish. Uh, I have the energy and the spirit to do it, but yeah, sometimes yeah. the talent isn't quite there. Um, I've always wanted to be an Olympic athlete. Oh, wow. I have no skill set well. in that area either, and I'm told that I might be bridging that age. Where it's a little too you know, late in life. It's never too late. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So it, that'll probably always be a dream of mine. Um, and I think it just goes back to trying to be the best at, at something and, and just striving to your full potential because there's so much for each one of us that is within us that we don't even know because we just never tap into it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I am going to be a rock star one day or maybe I am <laughs> going to be know. the next actress or <laughs> Olympic athlete. You watch the next Olympics. Hey. You just might see me. We'll have this something. interview as proof. Uh -huh. that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> awesome. So. If, if that happens, please let me know. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> so Publix right now is in Florida mainly and the Southeast. Uh, Southeast, seven South states. Yeah. Yep. Um, are they, are you guys planning to maybe go to the West Coast, North, South? Well, a big West. thing with Publix and expansion has always been about having people to support that. So, yeah. you know, uh, Publix is a very financially sound company, uh, but to just take what we have and duplicate that or, you know, triple it overnight, um, yeah. we don't believe would make sense for our brand and, and our people. So even each move we've made, our move from Florida into Georgia, our move into the Carolinas, mm -hmm. our move into Virginia, has been, you know, making sure that there's there's work done beforehand to make sure that we have people trained and um, prepared to go in and still be able to uphold the standards of our brand and feel connected again to Publix. Not, well, I don't know, it's my first day. I, this whole Publix thing, you know, yeah, I don't know yeah. anything about it. And they don't have any buy-in to that they're a part of something bigger because when you're in a new market, it's even more challenging. Yes. You know, in Florida, I was born and raised in Florida, went to school at Mercer University in Atlanta. So that's as far north as I've ever <laughs> lived. Another interesting fact, I guess. Um, but when you're stretching out into a new market, uh -huh. there's a lot of people that may go, what is that? Yeah. Public? Yeah. Or you Public. Know, they'll, they'll say it <laughs> wrong. They'll spell it wrong. They'll, they, won't, they won't have any connection to what that yeah. is. Um, but also with technology and social media and all of that, there's people all over the country, all over the world yeah. that want a chicken tender sub. That's what <laughs> I was just about to say. That. Say that. So, That's true. So um, you know, now more and more, you do get places or people, you know, write into Publix and ask, "When are you coming here? Yeah. When are you coming here?" Yeah. So I think you know, we want to continue to grow. We just want to make sure that we do it in the right way, and and folks, you know beyond me are the ones making those decisions for sure. But I know that at the heart of everything we do, we want to continue to grow. We just want to make sure that we do it the right way with the right people. Perfect. So um, I, I guess we'll allude back. You did want to say, if you did have all your pharmacists in the room right now, <laughs> well, what, are, what is obviously something you said and what is like, I guess a message you would give them 
moving forward? Um, I think that the key in retail pharmacy is is really finding your passion and and making sure that it's something that you love. Now, I hope with this, I don't get a lot of resignations of, you know, Kathy inspired me so much that I'm finding my you passion. Get a lot I'm going to go do something else. But finding your passion and realizing that retail pharmacy, while hard and while, while challenging, it's rewarding, too, if it's done in the right way. Mm -hmm. And if people develop the right skill set, have the right support structure, and invest in people around them. A lot of people have invested in me in my career. Mm -hmm. And if I can get our pharmacy managers in 233 stores to mm -hmm. invest in their associates that they see day in and day out, you know, the future operations manager is is somewhere in that group, yeah, you yeah. know, that may think, you know, I don't know if I should go to pharmacy school. Those same conversations mm -hmm. are taking place. Yeah. And just really a sense of gratitude. You know, it's it's hard with that many people. And as the workforce continues to grow and expand to connect enough where people really feel appreciated you know i can't i can't give everybody more money every day i can't yeah, no. you know give them new cars and all kinds of i can give you a t-shirt yeah. hey, it's, really it's, it's a very nice t-shirt <laughs> but i think what matters the most to people sometimes are the words that we say and taking time when it's unexpected to not just celebrate you know your very top performers and not mm -hmm. just beat up your low performers but what about all these people that are in the middle yeah. that want to feel noticed and that they, they want to feel like the work they do matters and there's a connection. So that's a big part of my message, I think, right now is really just emphasizing those personal connections of what can we do and just remember to show gratitude in what we do. And I think people feel better about what they do. Yeah. They'll feel inspired to overcome some of those not so good days where yeah. you're like, why am I doing this? And that customer walks in that, you know, you helped them when, when somebody was going through chemo or mm -hmm. you helped them with a child um, diagnosis or something. Then you go, that's why I'm here. That's yeah. what it's about. It's about the people. Where is Dr. Leonard headed in the next five years? Are there any next goals that you years. haven't met? Is there any <sighs> bucket list things in your career that you want to? Or not career. Um, I, I think I don't have a crystal ball again. I don't, I don't know where I'll be in five years. I know that my, my spirit is always to just kind of keep progressing. Mm. I love to learn. I love to read. Uh, and I love to, um, to take on new things and watch things grow and thrive. I love to see success in other people. Yeah. Uh, that's rewarding for me. So to do my part to continue to build a better, stronger Publix. But in whatever capacity that is, I'm pretty sure that people will be at the center of it. I don't know what it what it looks yeah. like, but it'll it'll certainly involve people. CEO. <laughs> <laughs> that job is being is is taken right now by someone uh, that I would I wouldn't have anybody else there. So we're we're in good hands with our leadership across Publix, which is which is fantastic. Yeah. We have a, a phenomenal um, uh, vice president or um, of um, pharmacy, Dane Rusk. And our leadership here in the Miami division is exceptional with John Goff and uh, Todd Jones, Kevin Murphy. We have so many phenomenal leaders that inspire and motivate me every day to, to work harder and give my all because I see what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can keep that cascade where a technician sees what their pharmacy manager mm -hmm. is doing, mm -hmm. pharmacy manager sees what their supervisor exactly. is doing, the supervisor sees what I'm doing, and you can you feel that connection to uh, I'm not doing this by myself or I'm not just a number I'm actually a person I'm an owner of Publix. Everybody that works for a Publix is my business partner and I treat them as such. Mm -hmm. So with that comes responsibility and expectations, but also a sense of pride and connection. So are there any last in ending messages you would like Wait, to before leave? Before we go, I have one question. Yeah, one more. Another oh, I'm question. So sorry. Just last one. The last That's one. Right. Um, so our first interview was with Dr. Kernan. He's the Cleveland Clinic uh, Director of Pharmacy, and he's also president of FSHP. Mm -hmm. And he said something that stuck with us for, oh, uh, yeah. for uh, the, all the episodes, and we like to ask it. He said something that his boss ins instilled in him to a bias for yes. Always say yes. Yes. And never said no. Mm -hmm. Is that um, something that, how, what do you think of that? Do you believe in that? I do. I think that, you know, it's, the easy answer is no. You know, we can't yeah. do it this is why, or you've been told no in the past. So the easy thing is, you know, path of least resistance. You know, if I just say no and somebody keeps moving on, that'll be good. But I think by saying yes and putting yourself out there for different things that you may not be prepared for or have the skill set. Mm -hmm. um, I read the book Lean In, very popular book about exactly that. Have a seat at the table. Raise your hand. You may not know what you're in for, and you may fail. 
at yeah. it. Yeah. But you know what? Too often we're too, we live in like a perfectionist society yeah. that we're, we don't allow ourselves. We stay in our comfort zone because if I'm here, I'm safe and I'm not going to fail. So I'm gonna, it's going to be perfect rather than really pushing those extremes Back. to yeah. seeing, you know what? I want to fail sometimes because then I'm going to know I want to fail in the right way. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to intentionally go out and fail, but if I want to test things, I want to try things. I want to take different approaches meeting here with you guys today. I, I've never done anything like this before. So it's put, taking yourself out of your comfort zone and saying, you know, yeah, I might fail, but there's also a message in that, that it's okay to fail. Mm. It's what you do from that, that really matters. And, right. you know, celebrities, athletes, so many examples politicians, um, so many people that have had significant failure in their yeah. life and have yeah. gone on to become the very best in their field. Exactly. So um, I think we've got to get people a little bit more comfortable with that so that they continue to say yes yeah. and take some chances instead of just saying, you know, I don't want to be in the game. Yeah. <laughs> nah, get it to somebody else. Perfect. So any last messages? Last message is really just thanks to both of you for including oh, Publix you. in this. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of of Publix, but Publix isn't a name on the building. Publix is the people within the organization that make it strong. Yes. So we will continue to invest in, in our people, which is our greatest uh, resource, uh, to be able to make sure that we're able to serve our customers well into the future. Awesome. But well, thank you so much for taking the time out You're of your welcome. busy, busy really schedule. You're welcome. I'm, really heading, nice. I'm heading south, going to go visit <laughs> stores because you've got to be there. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be out in the exactly. stores. So that's my plan for today. Well, we appreciate you taking the time and for the gifts. We appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you both. Thank you. And thank you for everyone that tuned in. My name is Nima. I'm Aaron. And thank you for accepting our invite.